So one of the questions I get asked a lot on JTR subwoofers is what settings do I recommend for the amplifier? So let's take a look. So let's just walk through each one of them. Up at the top, you've got auto, you've got 12 volt, and you've got on. So if you want the subwoofer to just auto sense, whether you're using XLR or RCA connections, if you want the subwoofer to just automatically turn on and off based on the signal that it gets from either one of these sources, just put that right in the middle to auto. If you are using a 12 volt trigger, that's this right here. On the back of most AVRs and processors, there you may see a option that says 12 volt trigger. So you can connect a 3.5 millimeter, it's just an, a, a single cable, come out of your AVR into here. And then if you need to, if you have multiple subwoofers, you could always come out of here to the second subwoofer. What that's going to do is every time you turn on or off your AVR or processor, it will send a small signal, or actually it, it cuts that signal and lets us know to turn on or off. In my setup, I just leave it on at all times. I don't ever want it to go to sleep on me or in like a standby mode. You can see right here, you've got an on and a standby. So I just like to leave mine on. That's just a personal preference. So let's go through the different knobs. So the top one is a gain. So number one, you need to understand this is not a volume knob. A lot of people think this is a volume. It's really not a volume, it's more of a gain. Now, here's what I've always been told and what I've always done over the years. I tend to tell people to, when you get a subwoofer, start with it at the 12 o'clock position, so straight up. Then once you run your calibration software like Odyssey or Dirac, it's going to notify you, hey, your sub is too loud or too soft, and then you can adjust this gain. Most of the time in my setup, I found that, that calibration software wants me to back it down to about a third, somewhere around in there. So my recommendation is anywhere between say a third and half should be sufficient. Now I do wanna ask Jeff and Tony at JTR if there's a more scientific approach to that. I know there is, but I'm not aware of that. And so if I find out some additional information, I'll make a future video on that, explaining how you can figure out based on the voltage that's coming out of your amp, I'm sorry, out of your processor or your AVR, but I just don't know how to match that up to this amplifier. So that'll be a question I have to ask them. And like I said, if I find out some additional information, I'll make a future video on that. So somewhere between a third and half should be sufficient. Moving down to the next one, LF adjust. I recommend starting off with it all the way to the left to cut. You can see here it says cut, up at the top says flat, and then to the right it says boost. What this does is this only adjusts frequencies from about 40 hertz and down. So let's say you run your calibration, you set up your subwoofers, you dial them in, and you're like, man, I just, I want some more of the bottom end. I want more of that grunt, those lower end extensions, the really low bass frequencies from 40 hertz on down. That's where this LF adjusts, low frequency adjust. So as you increase that, it's going to add basically like a house curve on the bottom. So the bottom part of the frequency response is going to tilt up to about 40 hertz. That's all you're doing. You're not adjusting the overall gain of, of the entire frequency response, but just those lower frequencies. So again, my recommendation, turn this all the way to the left, run your calibration first, listen to it, play some movies, play some music, see if that's where, you know, it has enough bass for you in those lower frequencies. If it's not, go ahead and adjust this. And so just play with it. A lot of this is going to be determined by your room and the acoustics in the room and also preference. So that is there for you to adjust to your liking. Now, if you wanna take that a step further, take some measurements so you can physically see what is happening in your room and you can see exactly how much adjusting this adjusts your frequency response. And that'll give you a better visual idea of what's happening in your room. You would simply use REW, which is Room EQ Wizard. It's a free software you can download online with a calibrated microphone. We recommend the U-Mic 1 from Mini DSP. We sell them in the Obsessed Home Theater store if you need to pick one of those up. But you can take measurements in your room to see how that's going to be adjusted when you 
manually move that knob from left to right on the LF adjust. For your crossover, I recommend turning that knob all the way to the right. So that's going to say out. What you're essentially doing is you're telling the amplifier that you're using an external crossover. So when you set up your AVR or your processor, you're going to set the crossovers inside that for each speaker. Let's say your mains, you have, it, you have it set for 80 hertz and your center channel 80 hertz and then your surrounds are set at maybe 90 hertz. Well, all of those frequencies below those will come to this subwoofer and so you don't want to add a second crossover here in the amplifier. You don't want to have 110 crossover on some of your speakers and a hundred, or I'm sorry, and a 80 hertz crossover, you know, somewhere like there. And even this, we don't have specific frequencies listed on here, so you're really not sure what you're getting there. We've got 60 hertz all the way to the left. More than likely, it's 10 increments, so probably 60, 70, 80, 90. Nah, actually it's probably opposite. So it's probably five. So 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105. So that's probably it. So 110 roughly is usually the, um, or 60 hertz to 110 is usually what most crossovers are. So again, my recommendation, just turn that all the way to the right and bypass the internal crossover in the JTR amp. And then finally, we get down here to delay. So delay, typically, you're going to just set that all the way to the left. You don't want to add any delay to your subwoofer. So where you'd want to adjust this delay is if you have subwoofers that are not equal distance from your main listening position. So let's say your front left subwoofer is 12 feet from your main listening position, but you have your rear right subwoofer at only six feet distance from your listening position. So now you're going to need to add some delay to the one that's closer to your listening position so that both of the subwoofers, the bass that's coming from both of those, hit your listening position at the same time. If you don't do that, you can get some cancellations. Now most AVRs and processors can handle this internally when you do your calibration like Dirac or Odyssey, but the delay is here so that you can use that. So again, I would recommend getting a U-Mic 1, and that way you can physically see if one subwoofer needs to change. So prime example, so let's say you have both your subwoofers set at, at all the way to the left, no delay, and you take a measurement of both of those subwoofers and you're like, man, something looks a little weird. Well, play with this. Take another measurement with it here. Take another measurement all the way up. Take another measurement. So take different milliseconds and see which you get the best response. You might find that it's best to have a 20 millisecond delay on one of the subwoofers, the one that primarily is going to be closer to your listening position. Again, typically you don't have to worry about this. Your AVR or your processor will handle that, but that's what that knob is for. Now, if any of you know exactly how to figure out the appropriate gain to match that to your processor or your amplifier, you know, based on its output voltage, let me know down in the comments, uh, even if you got a resource. Now, if it's a link, then I'll need you to send it me an email, youthman at obsessedhometheater.com because you can't post a link uh, in the comments. But let me know what your thoughts are on this. Maybe you've got a different approach. I'd love to hear it. Now, if you need some JTR subwoofers, of course, we've got those on the website, obsessedhometheater.com. We'd love to earn your business. And if you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me direct. Hope you guys have an incredible week. God bless. I'll catch you in the next video.